how you came to this part in the series. Um, I did like a million, was it a million <laughs> auditions? That's a lot. We, how many did we reach? Um, yeah, uh, and Sam and I, <laughs> we did a lot of chemistry reads over Zoom, which was <laughs> very interesting experience. Oh yeah. We were on, on two different continents. And it really prepared you for like being a vampire because I think I did my, I think I did my first screen test <laughs> at 11 p.m maybe midnight <laughs> um <laughs> so uh that's how i kind of i mean it's a boring answer i, aud I auditioned yeah. but um I mean, you're skipping to the end there were right. hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people before we were, they're getting to this this right. sexy moment um so yeah. how did you find like had you <laughs> had you been told about this was this like something that you wanted part of yeah I, so i watched the movie when i was a teenager mm -hmm. and then as soon as i got the email about this this project i had this weird feeling in my stomach that i was kind of like before i even opened the pdf i don't know what it is i don't know what it was maybe it's i'm being all spiritual and weird and woo-woo about it but i just had like a feeling in the pit of my stomach and i read the first two books and in reading amrice's words i just the prevailing feeling for me was like, I wish that somebody had handed me these books when I was 15. Mm. I feel like I would have felt much less lonely. I would have felt much more understood. Um, and it kind of just completely washed over me. And I was so excited to, to be a part of this world and to tell this, this vampire story. Mm. I, I feel very, very deeply connected to Louis, sometimes in ways that aren't always easy for me to kind of articulate. Outwardly, yeah. <laughs> and you are, I gotta say, you're so good, like, Thank you. so good, like, because this is a tough, like, this is a tough role because you have to, you have to nail somebody that we sympathize with, but then also kind of was like, well, you know, I don't know, I kill her. Um, <laughs> whereas, well, Sam, you kind of had the opposite, like, you gotta make us love you. Um, what has that been like, and how did you come to this role? Um, well, I've always been a huge fan of the books uh, my whole life. So when I heard that it was being made, I sort of really prayed that I would get the chance to do an audition for it. Um, and auditioned and auditioned again and auditioned again and auditioned again. And then, yeah, we did, you know, uh, chemistry reads at like one o'clock in the morning in Australia. <laughs> You get calls from Roland, you know, giving you notes at like 2 a.m. Don't go to bed, don't go to bed. Yet. Like, oh my God, this is so intense. I can't believe this is happening. Um, yeah, and then obviously I got it and um, felt this extraordinary weight of pressure to have this opportunity to portray this character who you have such a deep connection to and love for. Um, and so got to return back to these books and just dive into them and um, study him. French lessons, piano lessons, dancing, singing, you know, all of this extraordinary stuff that you like dream about as an actor that you, you get to do. And then of course, Roland's dialogue is so beautiful. It's so eloquent. The lines that you get to say mixed with direct quotes from Anne Rice, um, it's, a, it's a gift. Um, it's the greatest gift that I've ever been given, really. And then of course, this guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Well, is, <laughs> so, I, am, yeah. I am not going to sugar up. I mean, I defy any, like any red blooded heterosexual, whatever, <laughs> to not watch this and be like, hmm, let's stop. If nobody tells them, I'm getting. Um, and it is, I mean, these two are <laughs> they're still terrible together, but they're hot. Um, and uh, it was like, how do you prep to play? these characters who are like so sophisticated and so well-versed in various art forms and knowledgeable and, and, and style and everything. Like, that's probably more than like, oh, how do you bite a neck? Yeah, I mean, the, the, I mean, the killing is, you know, it's a necessity. It's, it's, you know, and it's beautiful. And, you know, Anne talks about it. It's, you know, it's something to be enjoyed and saved. It's obviously depending on which vampire you are, but, um, <laughs> but, you know, yeah, the skills, you know, they've been around for a very long time. They're, they've lived such a long life. So they've been, you know, particularly a character like Lestat, he gets to absorb things. And, you know, Anne talks about, you know, he's a mimic. He can, he watches things. He, he takes a bit of that on, I'll take a bit of that on. I'll, I'll learn this language, you know, like I'll, I'll, I'll learn to read just by osmosis. You know? 
so I can speak Italian now via osmosis. There you go. You know, that easy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you have. So you weren't even born. I don't think you were born when the book was written, but you weren't even born when the movie came out. No. Oh, good God. <laughs> so how did you research the role? And like, what did you, you know, like, how do you approach this version of Claudia? I was so excited. Um, when I got the role, I was just, it's truly a dream role. And not like what Sam was saying, as an actor, being able to speak different languages on set, being able to do these incredible action sequences but then also the dialogue Roland your script I mean it's absolutely incredible your eyes are glued to the page I read the book of course I had all my annotations and my notes um and then working on technique I mean Claudia is a big big character she feels so much being 14 and she's trapped in this 14 year old body you know her her mind will never be able to fully develop which means that she is always going off emotions and these emotions that she feels so deeply and i'm really excited for women especially to see her because i get i got to play 14 then 17 then 20 25 all the way up to 30 and we really being because it's a show we got to really take our time and see who claudia is at those stages characters female characters particularly that get to not have to be great role models. Mm -hmm. Like that you get to play somebody who's bad and, and, and angry and well, feral. Well, bad is a strong word <laughs> because she doesn't think she's bad. You know, she feels what she feels and she, if she wants to eat, she's hungry, she will eat. And if she wants to say something, she will say something. And that's the awesome thing about Claudia. And I think that's why people connect with her so much. And being, a, and being bad is actually being good. In vampires. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now, Eric. I mean, I think the thing with the, uh, the, the, the really challenging thing with Lestat is he is sitting on a great deal of power. Um, and in order to make this relationship work, he has to constantly push that down, push that down, because in our universe, he has already been with Nikki. And he has already been in whatever you want to say about his relationship with his mother. And he is uh, coming on to the, uh, into New Orleans looking for something new, trying one more time to find the right person. And um, it becomes very, yeah, a very challenging thing to mm -hmm. how, do you, how, do you, uh, how do you meet someone in, in, in the At middle. a level, yeah. yeah. You're so powerful. It's hard, yeah. yeah. It's challenging. Yeah. And he Thanks. meets his match. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was so much, honestly. Yeah, every day. The, the thing about this, this show is every single day you were doing something that you'd never done before. <laughs> we, filmed, we filmed only at night. We became vampires. We, like, we lived at night for six months. Yes. Yeah. Extreme. Yeah. And, it, and, and as well, going back to the lenses, everything feels like a dream. Everything mm -hmm. feels, it was really helpful for me because it felt like a memory. Um, well, yeah. Well, treadmills well, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, treadmills. <laughs> treadmills, okay, so, so we walked on treadmills. Yeah. yeah, we had to walk on treadmills, but when it was like a static treadmill and we had to kind of look directly, I was gonna- Yeah, go for it, go for it. <laughs> it's really hard to like walk in a straight line on a treadmill, so we're like, <laughs> and then the camera goes around in circles while we're walking so it kind of looks like we're walking in slow motion and every time the camera was behind us we were laughing because you have to be like stoic and vampires there's so many i love that there's so many slow motion vampire killer mo moments in this show yeah. mm. oh <laughs> and i i have to say that uh, these guys didn't participate it's just me and louis but we had dinner together at one point in the show and He's having a vampire dinner and I'm having a regular dinner. That was pretty intense. Yeah. There is, there is, there's humor in this. There's, there's some really quite a scene. intense, evil humor in this morbid humor, which is really. Yeah, there's some definite dark humor. Yeah. yeah. The fact that at one point people, humans are referred to as savory inferiors. Um, so I was just informed that uh, I have to.